Hey guys, welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. We are in the midst of a study on Matthew chapter 24 and we are looking at the end of the age of verse 3. So, we have looked in the last several videos and we've seen from scripture that Jesus in his mindset, in his eschatology, in, in, in Jesus' theology, he only had two ages in mind. He called it this age, his present Old Covenant age, and the age to come, which would be the age of the kingdom, the age of eternal life. Mark chapter 10 and verse 30. And so when the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They are not asking about an end of a church age that would stand in between the Old Covenant age and the kingdom age. It's impossible, guys. Jesus only knew of two ages. He only taught two ages in his eschatology. The Old Covenant Age and the Kingdom Age that was, at that time, about to come. And in this video, guys, I want to show you that that is the truth. That is the biblical truth. And what I want to show you in this video is that the Old Covenant Age did not end at the cross. It continued into the New Testament times when the New Testament uh, was being written and that was the age that all the disciples were expecting to end. Not a imaginary church age but the old covenant age that would give way to the kingdom. And I want to show you this guys. It's very very important that we see that the old covenant age didn't end at the cross but continued up until AD 70 and the establishment of the kingdom of God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 to 8. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages for our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age had understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now guys, follow me on this. If Paul, like many believe, was, were li was living in a church age, the same age we are supposedly in, which stands in between the Old Covenant age and the Kingdom age, then why does Paul say that the wisdom he speaks, none of, the, none of the rulers of this age, of his age, understood it? That would have Paul saying that none of the rulers of the Christian age understood the wisdom of the Christian age. Right? <laughs> How logical is that, guys? But furthermore, look what Paul says in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 6. He says, the rulers of this age were passing away. Of the, are the rulers of the Christian age still somehow passing away? And if they are, how are they passing away? How are they being made idle? That word passing away is not, well, eventually they're going to die. No, it's being destroyed, being rendered useless. Are the rulers of the Christian age being destroyed and rendered useless? And that's not it, guys. Look in verse 8. It says, The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age had understood... For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Did the rulers of the Christian age crucify the Lord of glory? Did the rulers of the church age crucify the Lord of glory? I hope you're seeing, guys, that we cannot make Paul's this age, in which he's speaking of and living in, the church age, a so-called Christian age, a parenthetical age between the old covenant age and the kingdom age. Guys, the age in which Paul was living in and speaking and writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 was the Old Covenant age. Watch again. Yet we, in verse 6, we do not speak wisdom among those who are mature, but a wisdom, but wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. And it says in verse 8, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Guys, the rulers who crucified the Lord of glory the rulers of the Mosaic Age, the Old 
covenant age. Okay? Not the Christians. Not, not of the Christian age. The rulers that crucified the Lord were the Jewish Sanhedrin, the scribes and Pharisees who said, let his blood be upon us. And guys, the reason why Paul could say that they were passing away is because that old covenant age and the old covenant itself was still passing away. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 8, and we can prove this very, very easily. Hebrews 8, 13. When he says a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete, but whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. Guys, Paul in, in Hebrews 8, 13 says that the old covenant at that time had not yet vanished away. It, had, it was growing old, and it was ready to vanish away. It was ready to disappear. That's exactly why Paul could say the rulers of that old covenant age who would crucify the Lord of glory were likewise passing away. See, they were passing away with their old age. They were passing away with the old covenant. And when that old covenant and that old covenant age were fulfilled and totally taken out of the way, out of the way those rulers would be rendered idle. And made powerless as well. They would have no more rule and authority <laughs> under the age in which they had authority. Are you with me, guys? This is this is Paul's point that he still lived under the old covenant age. And the rulers of that old covenant age and that old covenant itself were, were passing away. This is powerful proof that the old covenant age did not end the cross, it continued until Paul's day. And the rulers of Paul's age were the Pharisees who crucified the Lord of glory, which means Paul was living in the old covenant age, <laughs> which was ruled by those who had crucified Jesus. Now guys, let me ask you a powerful question. If the old covenant age didn't end at the cross, when did it end? When did the old covenant age end? Because it didn't end in Paul's day. It didn't end in, in when 1 Corinthians chapter 2 was written. It didn't end when Hebrews chapter 8 was written. So when did the Old Covenant age end? See guys, this demands that the end of the age in Matthew 24 was the Old Covenant age. Because watch very, very carefully. The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, what will be the sign of your coming? and the end of the age. And in Matthew 24, verse 34, Jesus said, Verily I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So Jesus said that within his generation, there, that contemporary generation, all those things, including the end of the age, would be fulfilled. So Jesus said that the end of the age would come in that generation. That means... Since they were still living in the end of the age, post-cross, in the New Testament uh, writings, time of the New Testament writings, that the end of the age must have ended at the cross. Or sorry, must have ended in AD 70 in that generation. If not, when did, when did the Old Covenant age end? Furthermore, if the Old Covenant age didn't end in AD 70, then we're still in it. See, Jesus, he promised an end of some age in his generation. And since the New Testament or the church age hadn't even, didn't even exist in when the time the New Testament was being written, then that must mean, it must definitively mean that the age which Jesus promised to end in his generation, the same age that the disciples asked about, the end of the age, it must be, and it must refer to, the Old Covenant Age. Guys, the Old Covenant Age didn't end at the cross. Cross It continued into the time of the New Testament writings, and they were all expecting the end of that age. And Jesus promised the end of the age would come in their generation in fulfillment of the disciples' question, when will be the end of the age? Guys, what that means is that the end of the Old Covenant age was at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70 at, in their generation, just like Jesus promised. Jesus was not promising the end of a church age that didn't even exist 
at that time and didn't even, exi didn't even exist prior to AD 70? Guys, the church age, if you want to call it that, is the kingdom age. The old covenant age would continue until the kingdom. This proves, guys, definitively that there was no middle church age between the cross and the kingdom. Nope, didn't exist. Paul, <laughs> the days in which Paul lived were the old covenant age, where the rulers of that age were fading away. And the old covenant was passing away too, guys. There was no church age in between the law of Moses and the kingdom. And what this means is that in AD 70 and in that generation, when that old covenant age ended, it gave way fully and completely to the messianic kingdom in Jesus Christ. So guys, I hope that has helped. And now we we can move forward, guys. We are on a, a good foundation to understand Matthew chapter 24. And it's not dealing with the end of a Christian age. It's, it's dealing with the end of the old covenant age, which extended past the cross into uh, the, the 50s, 60s AD and culminated in AD 70 at the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the, uh, and, and the initiation and the establishment of the new covenant kingdom age in Jesus Christ. God bless, guys. Bye for now.